Hey friends, welcome to episode number 70. 70! Woohoo! Of it'll be fine. Clearly, we've made it this far. It's going to be good. And you know what we're making today, guys? We're making spy. Spy. <laughs> What's that, you ask? Uh, fair question. Absolutely fair question. It is sweet potato pie. So excited. So excited to bake and have a food chat with the wonderfully talented and the very funny Katie Zane. I am so glad Katie is joining me today on the show to talk about food, about comedy, about finding your voice, you know? And uh, all the while, we're gonna bake a pie. Or, or I'm, I'm gonna bake a pie. Katie's gonna listen to me baking a pie. It feels so weird to have someone over and I can't share. <laughs> it feels so strange. But, um, oh my gosh, so glad. Katie joined in. They, as I say, are one of the funniest folk I've gotten to meet uh, in the past few months of doing stand-up comedy online. And uh, Katie is based out of Chicago. So we got a lot to talk about. We got a lot to bake. This is going to be awesome. And uh, on today's show, uh, because it's a brand new month, we're raising awareness for two new charities, the first of which is Chefs for the Poles. Now, this is a wonderful uh, organization that is happening through World Central Kitchen. And here's what they're doing. They're making sure that when you go vote, if you're you know, not able to get food before you go vote, or maybe you're voting on your way home after a long day and making dinner just isn't even in your field of vision, Chefs for the Polls is making sure that you have access to a voting station and a hot meal. Like that's pretty awesome. They're feeding people and making sure they can exercise their right to vote. So check them out in the show description, see what they're doing and support them if you can. So guys, episode 70, baby, we got spy. It's gonna be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. All right, so the first thing you are going to need to do for this bake, and by the way, this recipe makes four pies. I'm just making one, so I am batching down like a mofo. <laughs> Baking term, technical. All right, so we got our potatoes. We are going to cook these up first. You don't want to, you don't want to overboil these. Um, Yeah, I was actually kind of hoping because of the nature of how they had to film this season of British Bake Off yeah. that they would show some behind the scenes stuff. I was really hoping for it, but they haven't thus yeah. far, at least in the first episode. Yeah, no, I, that would be a show I would, I don't know if I'd do well on that. I don't know if I would either because I don't think I could deal with the time element. Like I just... When I bake, sometimes I might bake and it might take six hours <laughs> to make something really simple, but that's just the way it is. <laughs> no, exactly. Um, the recipe that I'm doing today, which I have to say, usually I freaking love someone coming over. You know, like you're kind of where this laptop is right now, you're on my kitchen bar. So okay. Like you're right there and I'd bake and then I'd sh offer you a slice. I can't do that through the TV. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I owe you some pie. Down the <laughs> no worries. We'll have to exchange some pie one of these days. Most definitely. So what we're baking from today is my friend Ria had this little cookbook made up a number of years ago. Um, well, she, I'll be honest. This was the, the, a marriage that did not work out. Okay. <laughs> and that happens. Ask him the cookbook. But there's a cookbook that I still have. <laughs> How many marriages can say that? <laughs> <laughs> So this is a freaking awesome little idea. Um, I really genuinely have made more use out of this than any like saucer or something or other I got from a wedding, you yeah. know, which just goes in a cupboard. But I've actually used this, but I've never ever made this one. So this is Frank's famous sweet potato pie. Have you, Katie, ever made a sweet potato pie? I feel like I did like 15 years ago, <laughs> like back when I didn't really know what I was doing. And I went through this big phase where I was like, I'm going to be a pie. That's actually how I started baking is I just decided that I was going to be a pie baker. 
because my mom's a baker and I grew up with her baking. And I was just like, well, I'm just going to be a baker. So I think I tried sweet potatoes like to make it, but like years ago when I was out in California. Gotcha. Oh my gosh, whereabouts in California were you? I used to live in, I lived in Davis where UC Davis is. And then oh. I lived in Sacramento for like the last year that I was there. Oh my gosh, my best friend growing up, uh, who I got to know in Montreal, she was from Sacramento, or she is from Sacramento. Yeah. And she ended up moving to Montreal for a few years because her dad was teaching in Montreal. So that's how we met. But she's a Sacramento gal. Allison. Yeah, I, I like Sacramento. It's like as soon as I can safely go places and do comedy other places, it's one of the places I want to go back to. Oh, my God. Gosh, have you been up here? I The closest I've, like, I've gone to Canada, but, like, on the Niagara Falls okay. side. Like, that's, I've gone to Canada like that, but that's it. <laughs> it doesn't really count. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I went to like the shops on the Canadian side and okay. got like, and I went to like all the very, I'm sure, stereotypical Canadian crap shops. Oh, <laughs> so I remember it was like full of maple syrup and like hunting hats and red plaid. <laughs> Which is usually what I'm wearing. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> One groovy thing about doing stuff on my laptop, I just have to open the screen. No, I love right it. <laughs> I get so much work. I, I personally, like, especially because I'm disabled, like, I get so much more work done doing Zoom comedy than I could ever do in person. Oh, my gosh. Because you I, can do, like, six sets in one night if you want to. I know. And that amount of, like, repetition and practice makes people better. Like, you're going to get yeah. better faster doing that much repetition. That's the whole deal with comedy. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's I, I've not had too many um, in-person shows over the past few months. But mm -hmm. I do believe that doing like the hustling that we're doing on all of these Zoom shows, you don't feel as rusty getting back in front of people. Oh yeah, like we, right. we did, we've done it since like pretty, I've done it since like day one. Michael started yeah. doing it a couple weeks after I did because at first he was like, I don't know. <laughs> right, right. Um, <laughs> but like I've been doing it since pretty much the very, like the first week of the pandemic. Yeah. Um, and so I had been doing it for like, I guess, March, April, May. And then I did my only, the only in-person thing I've done since the pandemic started was I did an outdoor mic in June. And Michael and I both opened the mic and we both like crushed like so hard. And both of us were like, dang i guess doing all that zoom is really paying off and then all the other comics there hadn't been doing zoom so they were all like they hadn't done stand-up in three months yeah yeah it's uh it's been a nice little perk of just keeping us active and uh, yeah. i mean being in person i will not argue it's a completely different muscle you have to kind of stretch your... it is i was literally talking to my therapist about that the other day i was like it's it's like two different sets of skills i have a lot of anger about people crapping on zoom so i literally have to talk to my therapist about it um but yeah. like it's it is it's like two different sets of skills yeah. to do like i mean the writing itself is like you know kind of the same like a lot of the joke writing is the same but yeah. like learning how to perform in front of a camera versus performing in front of live people is a different thing. Exactly. Now, before I forget, I'm going to set the oven to 400. So for this recipe, it's 400. Doesn't take too long, about 35 minutes for this. That's so. pretty That's pretty quick for a pie. It's pretty good. And um, my uh, overachieving oven uh, might be done in 20. <laughs> you got I, one of those. I don't know what is with this thing, but it's just like, hey, I'm done. <laughs> it's a very Toronto oven. It's like, nah. <laughs> now, I, I would show you what I'm mixing together, um, but it honestly looks disgusting. <laughs> so I won't provide that visual. But in this pan here with my potato masher um, has been the potatoes, butter. It doesn't say unsalted, but I used unsalted butter for this. Um, nutmeg, cinnamon, brown sugar and vanilla. So that is what is in here. And behind me is the pie crust I made. Very nice. 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 Do you do much baking yourself? Yeah, I actually do a great deal of baking. I eventually one of these days I'll, I plan to sell my baking stuff. Awesome. But it's just a matter of getting my life in the right place for that to be happening. Yeah. Um, specialty. I try to bake once a week, but that doesn't always happen. Yeah. Like, I wish, I, because of my different physical issues, I, I, I want to bake every day. Like, if, in a perfect world, I would just bake something every day. Because yeah. I love baking. It makes me so happy. It's, like, the best thing in the world. I love that you have this show. I think this is such a great idea. Oh, thank you so much. It's, um, 
it's been it's been a nice uh, thing to have on the agenda during the past mm. month, you know, because I live alone. I occasionally talk to talk to friends on the Zoom or on the telephone, but it's not the same. And I'm someone who loves hosting a dinner party. So yeah, the kitchen is like my Zen space. You know, it focuses me. It gets me happy again. Um, what was the first thing you ever learned how to make? Do you remember? Uh, probably cookies. Cause, uh, I grew up, my mom is a major baker. Yeah. And so I grew up with her, like, um, she wouldn't because like my mom did the, like going back to college thing when I was small. And so she was super, super busy. So yeah. it wasn't like we baked all the time or throughout the year, but during Christmas time, that was like mom's baking time. Oh, and yeah. it was like really special. And she would always let us help her. And so probably, I probably like chocolate chip cookies were probably the first thing I ever made. Um, Cause I can't specifically remember the first thing I baked. Cause I started baking when I was a kid mm -hmm. and then um, like started trying to learn to be like, learn what the hell I was doing in my early twenties <laughs> and then have just, uh, my mission has been pie. Like that's been my obsession with baking is pie. Like I actually, one of the things with me not being able to bake along is I actually have frozen pie crusts that are like pre-made that I haven't pressed out and baked. But I made them, I prepared them, and I froze them for whenever I want to use them. And right. I, fr I didn't defrost my pie crust. <laughs> and so I was like, well, I don't feel like making a bunch of crust from scratch. And I know, like, I can make a pie like that, too, because I do make them. That, if I do bake, that's as it tends to be the thing I bake. Yeah. I used to always be, like, an, a fruit pie person. But now I've started to make uh, chocolate cream pies and custard pies, uh, which are amazing. Oh, man. I think... I think a, a fruit pie was the first thing I ever learned to do. I've, I've occasionally touched on it in my set of how I used to bring pies to birthday parties when I was like 10. <laughs> I legitimately did that. That's <laughs> wonderful. So, I mean, it was really weird. I'm like, guys, I brought a berry crumble. Like, yeah. yeah like, uh, did you bring a video game too? Like, what's up? <laughs> So into this, I've added the eggs, and the mixture is just spot on. It's really good. I have kicked up the brown sugar for this, so it's more of a dessert pie mm -hmm. than than a dinner. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You could do. You could just make it way more savory in this case. But yeah, it was uh, it was very crumbled for my first thing. But like chocolate chip cookies too. Uh, I was talking the other day to a friend about um, having cookie mix in in the cupboard in the fridge and i kind of dig that when you're a kid and you're learning how to figure out you know what an oven does and what what it's like to make i remember using like the take and break or the break the break apart cookies or like the yeah. cookie dough like the toll house cookie dough when i was a kid i love that stuff you know i still do that on occasion as an adult when i feel like like because for me raw cookie dough is like key to broken heart fixing <laughs> I definitely, I definitely, I, I'm not a person who likes to eat straight up cookie dough. Okay. That's not my thing, but I really, really like cookie dough and ice cream. Like I am a big fan of that. Like that's one of my favorite textures in the world is cookie dough and ice cream. It's so good. Yeah, it's so, so good. I did want to ask real quick, uh, as, as a baker myself, I did notice that this is a one bowl recipe. Yeah. You did not have to divide any of your ingredients. You did it all in one, which is really nice and easy. It makes baking easier when you have a one bowl recipe. And this is like a legit one bowl recipe because I own Martha Stewart's one pot cookbook. Oh. And uh, there's more than one pot. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know what she was counting. Like, oh, we're not going to worry about the mise en place. Or we're not going to worry about the stuff you have to put in from one to the other. <laughs> she's like no it's really all in one it's for real effectively it ends up in one pot but getting there there's there's a few pots. I always get nervous whenever I like because I'll go online and like look up recipes and then like fiddle with them until they're how I want them to be yeah. I hate when I look up cake sometimes and it's a one bowl cake because one bowl cake is very nerve-wracking to me because of the science behind cake <laughs> and I'm just like and I don't make cake is not the thing I make all the time like it's definitely like I definitely make more custards creams pies and stuff like that and oh. bread but yeah. like um yeah <laughs> I'm always like ooh. do you uh do you have a name for your company that you're gonna sell stuff under uh yeah it's uh it's gonna be uh zane's pastries and pie oh nice uh because i was gonna do katie i was actually originally gonna call it katie cakes but there's actually already 
an incorporated business in Chicago called Katie Cakes. <laughs> so yes. I couldn't use that name. And so I was like, yeah, I like my last name. Yeah. And it's going to be, that's what I'm going to be selling is patisserie and pie. So. Oh, that is so, oh, I love that. Yeah. I want to make, um, uh, oh my gosh, full puff. I don't want to make full puff pastry. Oh, nice. Oh. Or, or rough puff, one of the two. I'm kind of either way with it. Because the process of making rough puff, especially, is really similar to making pie crust. Like, because of the way that you, um, because when you make rough puff, the way the butter pieces are supposed to be is really similar to pie. And so I feel like I could make rough puff pastry. The only thing you have to learn is like the folds. Yeah. But I, full puff is harder because you have to deal with a giant piece of butter. And I don't really, first of all, I'd have to make a giant piece of butter. I don't live in a place that has like a dairy. I'm not in England where I can just buy slabs of butter. Yeah. Because the U.S., I don't, I don't know about Canada, but U.S. does not sell butter that way. I've never seen butter like that. Yeah, you have to make it. You have to push like sticks of butter together and then like put them in a pan and make a slab. I, I impress myself when I grate my own cinnamon. So I don't think <laughs> I'm going to be making I have grated. I have grated butter. Uh, because uh, one of the ways to make really good flaky biscuits is to grate your butter into the biscuit. And I learned that because I worked at a biscuit uh, breakfast place. <laughs> that, yeah, that is a really hot tip. I'll show you. Yeah, grating your butter for biscuits is always, ooh, that looks perfect. Look at that. She's pretty. That was super easy. This is a very, very easy recipe. I know. This is Frank's famous sweet potato pie. Yeah, it's all one bowl. You just put it all in. Yeah, and then you bake it for 35 minutes. So I'm just going to wait for the oven to get, get. And so when you were putting the ingredients in, did you go from wet to dry? Kind of like pancake mix? Yeah. Okay. Did that and whipped it all together. I even have a little left in the bowl, which I'm probably going to eat. While <laughs> Although it's really nice with a filling like that. You can just eat it. You can just eat it. <laughs> though it's got the egg in it, I probably shouldn't. Eh, microwave yeah. it for like 30 seconds. You'll probably be fine. Yeah. I know. I was Viewers, such, don't listen to me. I'm not a doctor. <laughs> being a child of the 80s, though, I ate so many things with raw egg in it. I baking. I do things like eat leftovers that were left out overnight. Like, I got Popeyes the other day, and like part of it left, got left on the counter. Uh, and I most definitely ate it the next day. It was fine. <laughs> mic issues of late. Can you hear me at all? Like, I can hear you, but you sound like you're really far away. It's super weird. I could hear you fine before, like, perfectly oh, fine. Weird. Stupid. Yeah, no, you sounded like you were, like, down a tube, like, really far away. I was like, what the hell? Yeah, we'll blame my fire alarm, which just went off. Cause... Is that just because you opened the oven and put the pie in and that little bit of the, op the oven opening? Yeah, yeah but it, it'll do that with things boiling on the stovetop. It's just like, that's danger. why I have, I actually have ours disabled, which I know is not safe. Um, but I do have ours. I've had mine disabled because it was so sensitive. Yeah, I feel like there's only enough room for one anxiety ridden person in this apartment, which is me. Uh, mm -hmm. But apparently my fire alarm is also like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> What's no. Well, but we were touching on like, you know, being in your 20s and, and thinking about stand up, but like not, you know, going ahead and doing it. I really admire so much the younger performers that I see doing oh, it. Oh, me too, all the time. Like, like, how do no, you do that? I started, I was, I'm like, I started when I was 33. Okay. And so yeah. like, I was also like in my thirties. And so like these people that I meet that are like, they started when they were 19, 17. Yeah. And some of them are quite good. Yeah. I'm like, I would have not been that good at 21. <laughs> I, I feel like I'm quite good now, but I would yeah. not, I don't think I would you have are. been very good if I had started when I was younger. For me, yeah. I had to live a bunch of life before I could do this. Exactly. And yeah. I, I also had to give myself permission to go try it. I had to be my own like cheerleader to like, mm -hmm. go for it. I didn't, I didn't think I had anything to say or that I even could, or that I even deserved to be you know, trying it. Um, but that only comes with, you know, hopefully perspective as you get older. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what, what made you go do that initial mic? Did you have friends tell you like, go do it? Or did you just like, fuck it? I'm just going to go. So here tonight. It was sort of serendipitous. how it all worked out. So basically how I, my, like 
it is it's a, it's actually a great story so how i ended up getting into chicago comedy was that i used to play um in a pinball women's league here in chicago um oh, cool. so i used to play in this uh, it was a beginner's league and i used to go every week on wednesdays and play yeah. in this really great arcade it's a barcade that's here in chicago it's awesome logan arcade if i can oh, pimp cool. that out on here totally <laughs> uh, logan arcade is fantastic if you ever come to chicago please support them yeah. um and so i used to play pinball there and i was leaving actually one night early because i actually wasn't feeling great and as i was leaving there was this woman um, who uh, was wearing a bright, like, duck yellow Paddington Bear rain jacket. And so, Ooh. like, I noticed her as I walked out, and then she, sh she, was, she was like, I have this pair of shoes that have cheeseburgers on them. And so they're my burger shoes. And generally when I wear them, people will stop me and be like, oh, my God, those are really cool shoes. And yeah. so she stopped me to talk to me about my burger shoes. We ended up, like, talking for a little bit. Both realized our names were first names were both Katie. And we were like, we need to be friends. And so we immediately like added each other to Facebook. <laughs> yeah. And then like immediately connected. And then I hung out with her a little bit. And then I was, um, I was going out of town to go visit my family. And she messaged me and she was like, hey, do you think you could come and sling beer at this uh, street fest? Blah, blah, blah. There's no payment, but you'll get free beer. And I was like, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. So when I did that, I met a couple of other comedians who also went there to sling beer. And then I ended gotcha. up hanging out with those comedians. We all went out that night. And so like uh, this one guy that was one of the people we hung out with that night, this guy, Steven, um, I started like hanging out with Steven. And then I started going to mics with Katie sometimes. Yeah. And it was just, I went to probably a handful of mics before I was like, I need to do this. I already knew I wanted to do it. Like when I met Katie, realized she did comedy, realized these other people were comedians. I started mm -hmm. talking about it. Yeah. And my, my friend, my friend Steven was the one who was like, just do it. Like, just get on stage and do it. So I was literally like going to mics, going to mics, not going up. Yeah. And then I was at, it was a random Friday night and I had already gone to other mics that I didn't go up at. Mm -hmm. And we were at like the last mic, it was like an eleven fifteen mic at yeah. this terrible bar that's now closed that everyone hated. <laughs> um, and uh, I just, I was like, I'm going to go up. I'm going to do it. Nice. And I put my name in the, it was a bucket mic. And so mm -hmm. I put my name in the bucket and they drew my name yeah. and I went up. I had, I, I did it because I had exactly one story that was very funny about this time that I, I dressed as Miley Cyrus for Halloween. And I thought I was going to get murdered by this taxi driver, but I thought I was going to get murdered dressed like Miley Cyrus. <laughs> and like, that was basically the punchline. Yeah. Yeah. And that was all I had. I didn't have a bunch of jokes. I had this one funny story and that was what I did for my first mic. Oh. There's, there's something that after like a set that maybe gets you riled up or like whether it's Zoom or in, in, in real time, it's weird to say in real life. Cause I feel like this is real life too. I know, I feel variation. the same way, it's sort of strange. <laughs> but is there something you gravitate towards food wise to like calm you back down? Um, is there a treat? Uh, I do have peanut butter M&Ms next to me right now. That nice. has been kind of my thing. I like ice cream, I'm a big ice cream person. Um, I'm trying to limit my Ben and Jerry's eating to one pint a month. What is your Ben and Jerry flavor? Um, right now, like I, I switch, you know, but right now my, my favorite one is the brownie batter core because mm. the brownie batter core is essentially a core of fudge. I mean, it's I basically like one. hot fudge yeah. that's cold. Yeah. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> that one is really good. I'm a Cherry Garcia girl. That's old school. You're old yeah. school. Cherry Garcia. I'm Cherry Garcia. I do enjoy that one a fair bit. And I do like uh, the, the Tonight Show one. Oh, Michael likes that one, the Tonight, that one's, the tonight Dough. Tonight Dough, okay. yeah. It's pretty <laughs> good. It's pretty good. I haven't had a, we don't have in in the shops here in Toronto, I don't have all the flavors that would be accessible in the States, but. Okay. They, I bet you, you guys have some the, flavors we don't, though. That's quite I wouldn't possible. be surprised. Yeah, there's a, there's one that uh, Toronto band, the Bare Naked Ladies, um, they've got a Ben and Jerry's flavor, if I had a million something. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. See, I don't think we have that one in the States. Oh. But yeah. Well, I was thinking because like you guys perfect. are pretty close to where Ben and Jerry's is actually made in Vermont. You're not too, too far. Uh, my family, when I was growing up, our cottage was in Lake Placid because I'm from Montreal. So Montreal and Lake Placid aren't too far away from each other. Um, so yeah, when I was a kid, when I say when I was a kid, it was when I was a teenager. But, <laughs> yeah, it wasn't far at all. <laughs> 
got pop- that's actually that's like uh i have some factory tours i want to go on in the u.s and uh ben and jerry's factory is definitely up there oh almost in <laughs> that's beautiful ignore the burnt crust there but looks pretty good yeah it smells delish i'm gonna give it a second so i don't burn <laughs> I know I'm I'm always like I hate putting the little foil strips on the side that keeps the burning from happening. I always just like fiddle with the way I have my crust and bake it at a temperature where it doesn't do that. Um but I hate doing I foil strips are the hardest thing in the world to put on something that's round. They always say it like it's super easy, like, oh just put like you've ever made like a frozen pot pie? Like a Marie do you guys have Marie Calendar pies in Canada? I've heard that name, but I don't think I've ever I don't think I've ever seen it. I was going to say, because pot pies is a pretty American thing. So I don't know if you guys would even have pot pies. <laughs> uh, <in laughs> no, Canada. we do have pot pies. Yeah, no, we definitely do. Um, okay. I just don't know if I've heard that brand name before. But basically like those, fr- like a frozen pot pie that you buy from the freezer section, they yeah. always have directions that tell you to put the damn foil on the side. And it's like almost impossible. Because it's like <laughs> this, it's, it's a very, it's maybe five and a half inches in diameter. Yeah. And then, like, you're having to take straight foil and curve it around. Like, it's so stupid. There are some I don't recipes. ever get to bitch about these things to anyone. This is the only place where this is appropriate. It's a safe space. Safe space. Um, <laughs> you were saying that uh, Canadian Thanksgiving is around this time of year. When is y'all's Thanksgiving? Yeah, so our Thanksgiving uh, coincides with uh, Columbus Day. Oh, okay. Yeah. Which I... <sighs> I've always wanted to know why is Columbus Day celebrated? Yeah, he did not I don't know. Everyone, the, a lot of people in the U.S. feel the same way. <laughs> I've never. I feel like that's pretty. It's pretty well known. He didn't discover America. Yeah, and he's like well known to have been like an awful person. Though I recently found out apparently he died penniless and alone. Oh. Hmm. So there's that. <laughs> well, there we go. Um, but yeah, that's always blown my mind of like, why does this keep getting celebrated? I genuinely don't understand. <laughs> well, in the U.S., they've actually, in some places, they've changed it to oh. Indigenous People Day. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah, so that's, that's like a running trend in the U.S. is that commonly people, instead of cel- celebrating Columbus Day, they'll celebrate Indigenous People Day. Okay. Because it's the most appropriate way to take that holiday back from Columbus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like we celebrate in October because we're celebrating uh, the harvest. Like there's a different reason for our Thanksgiving. Yeah, ours is shitty. (laughs) (laughs) Describe this cut. Oh, this is awful. Oh gosh. (laughs) It's that first slice. Sometimes it just does not come out nice. Nope. All right, getting a fork. I am so sorry you can't taste this with me. I know, it's okay. You'll have to tell me everything. I feel like a really imagine. jackass host of like, hey, I made something. <laughs> <laughs> you can't have can't any, have it. though. <laughs> all right. Um, all right, let's see how this tastes. Let's see. All right, so I once again added in some purple sweet potato because they're purple on the outside, uh, but they're white on the inside. So if you buy them thinking you're going to have a purple pie, no, you won't. You (laughs) will not. Yeah, actually, most purple vegetables are disappointing. (laughs) Oh, this good. Yeah, it's really good. Oh, I cranked up the brown sugar. That was a good plan. Oh. I so love the original recipe is supposed happy. to be like a dinner pie, like something you have like on the side of turkey? It says you can do both. You can just amp up the sweetness if you want this for dessert, or you can take it down if you want it as a side. That's so, so interesting. You know, it's very versatile. Frank, I, you know, one pot and versatile. Hear, yeah, you don't hear a lot about pie sides. <laughs> like, I don't think of very many <laughs> pie-shaped things except for like quiche. This is delicious. I am genuinely sorry you're not here. No, right no, it's okay. I will eat some of my peanut butter m so I'll eat a delicious thing. It's very different from what you're eating. <laughs> this is really good. Oh, man. Just well, like- fresh pie. Fresh pie is the best. I, I certainly can't wait to, like, get traveling, get doing shows in different cities and sharing yeah. food and, and hanging out with you and Michael. This 
this has been awesome. Thank you so much for talking food and comedy. Oh with yeah, me. no, this has been awesome for me too. Well, okay. I feel I'm so glad that you're so you were so patient about me having to move it, uh, just okay. because sometimes I just can't do anything and I'm just like a blob. That's just how my life is sometimes. But this has been That's awesome. This has been like I've already had to be honest. I had already had like a really great day before we were talking, but like I, this has been a highlight <laughs> in my already very great day. <laughs> Amazing. Um, yeah. And you have a Halloween show coming up. Do I do. Not? Yeah, I have a Halloween out? show on the 30th. It's the day before Tara's show, uh, The Haunted Ottoman, yes. which yep. I'm on on the 31st. Um, I decided too. to do my show the day before as mm -hmm. to compete with her show. And since I was on her show, that made, made more sense. Uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a show, it's a mic, and it's a costume contest. I have three special judges um, that I picked. I have this woman that I know who lives in Oklahoma, who's this like online personality. Her name's Megan Rivera. She's fantastic. Uh, oh. Sharon Palm, who's an amazing comic here in Chicago. And then a burlesque dancer, my friend Fa Fancy Fontina is gonna be the other judge. Amazing. Um, yeah, and so I'm, I'm, I love Halloween, it's my favorite. And I was determined to not let this virus like ruin my favorite holiday so yeah. i was like i am doing this big viral party basically awesome. uh so that people can have a good time and have that energy of halloween i'm hoping yeah no perfect definitely folks watching today follow katie on the socials and find that show and go see it and we're both going to be on the haunt haunted, haunted ottoman, ottoman. so yeah. come on to that too yeah, um sure. but amazing all right i will bid you adieu i'll finish this pie for you <laughs> oh thank you thank you like I said, I'm probably just going to make my own like tomorrow. <laughs>